Hi you guys, what's up? My name's Callie and today I want to talk to you about something that I'm super passionate about and that's how to achieve fluency and learn a new language in an effective way. I love learning new languages. I actually speak Spanish in addition to my native language, which is English, and I'm learning Portuguese now, which has been such a fun journey. And let me tell you, there is a formula that you can use to learn new languages and become a polyglot. I use this formula and a bunch of people around the world use the same one and you can start using it too. So let's talk about the three pillars that I can consider essential when you're learning a new language. These pillars or aspects are what we should pay attention to when you're learning a new language. A lot of people think all you have to do to learn a language is study and do homework and worksheets and take classes because that's what the traditional methods have always told us, right? That's what we've always learned through history is how you learn something new. However, I'm here to tell you that that's not always the case. And there are other elements beyond just studying that will help us to learn a new language faster and in a more effective way. Let's start from the beginning. I'm going to take you way back, all the way back to 1909 in Hungary. A little girl was born and her name was Kato Lom. Years went by and when Kato became an adult, she graduated with a PhD in physics and chemistry. But after a short period of time went by after graduating, she realized her passion wasn't chemistry, it wasn't physics, but it was actually languages. What? How did we make this jump from from science and these very rigorous fields to languages. She actually became a translator and discovered that she loved learning new languages. So she knew what she was going to do next. She was going to teach English. The only problem, she didn't speak English and she had to learn it from zero. So at the time, Loam was in her late 20s and she spoke Hungarian, French, and a little bit of Latin at the time. But over the next two decades, she went on to become one of the first interpreters in the world and mastered 16 languages. She gained a basic understanding of almost 11 others and this was all on her own. It's amazing, right? <laughs> like how does a person learn 16 different languages. Can you imagine? I mean, there's Latin languages and then there's Germanic language. It's just, I can't even imagine. But she actually put together a formula to help others learn languages the way that she did because she was so passionate about it. She has a book that's called How I Learn Languages where she discusses these three aspects or pillars that you need when you learn a language. She says that no one is just born being good or talented at learning languages. All you need is this simple equation invested time plus interest divided by inhibition equals results. That's her formula. She expressed language learning in this simple equation by saying motivation plus the time you invest divided by inhibition, which was the denominator, making mistakes, um, being kind of afraid to sound silly, and that is what equals results. That's how you're going to become fluent in speaking that language. It's pretty cool, right? Now let's analyze these three different pillars. Motivation, invested time and inhibition so that we can understand a little bit more about her formula and actually put it into practice in our lives. Let's look at motivation. Motivation is actually the reason why a person wants to learn a language. And this is what's gonna keep you coming back to study every single day after day after day over the course of time. For example, my motivation to learn Spanish was to travel and live abroad, but not just to live abroad, but actually have the experience to communicate with the people in that country. So I always had the dream of living in South America ever since I had a teacher who was from Colombia and she really inspired me to listen to the music and learn about the dances and the food and overall the culture. But it became this thing where when I was speaking in Spanish and having these conversations with people from the country, I felt this deep connection to the people that I had never felt before. And I don't think I would have felt it if we were doing it in English, but rather I was speaking in their language, getting to know their culture and the true meaning behind how they live and how they speak. And that made all the difference. I felt like I was really connecting to like other humans in this world that have lived completely different experiences from me. And I loved it. It was amazing. So that was my motivation to continue to study and to continue to make friends and meet new people. What's your motivating factor? Is it for better job opportunities? Maybe to travel? Maybe it's to pass an important test that you have coming up or just to meet people and have different experiences in your life like mine. Finding your motivation to learn is super important for productive studying because this is the way that you'll find it easy to stay focused over a period of time. 
It will feel like you're not even studying, rather you're just having fun. And the more that we're having fun while we study, the less it will feel like studying. It'll just feel like time passes and your goals are becoming closer and closer. So what do you wanna accomplish by speaking this language? What kind of experiences do you wanna have with your new language? This motivation is a strong feeling that you'll have inside your heart and it'll just make you wanna keep going on this journey of learning a new language. When you're not motivated, you'll not only find it difficult to stay focused, but you're also going to find difficulty to get started in the first place. If you don't have motivation, you don't have a reason to want to learn the new language and you won't learn. And that's what happens to a lot of people, right? So let's get back to Katolom's formula. The second thing that was in her equation was invested time. Now invested time kind of seems obvious, right? It's the amount of time you've spent studying. But you probably know someone that moved to a foreign country without speaking the language, right? Like maybe someone moved to the United States and they didn't even know any English, maybe hello or thank you. And then after two or three years, this person is speaking English fluently, perfectly. Now you may think that this person learned because they were living in the country. You're kind of forced to speak English in your daily life, but you might also know someone else that moved to the United States or moved to another country and they don't really speak English. Maybe they stayed in their bubble or their community and didn't leave their comfort zone to talk to other people or to really try and actively learn English. Now this is where we see that living in the country isn't synonymous with mastering the language. Rather, it's the time that you invest into actively participating and actively practicing that language that makes all the difference. So to really learn the language, you'll need to invest time and you'll need to approach the language learning with determination and perseverance. So here at Fluency Academy, there are so many different ways that we can learn using videos or podcasts or classes to learn a language. We also have an app called MemHack that you can use to memorize the content that you're learning. And we also use the latest technology to make sure that you're only learning the things that you struggle with the most, more so than the things that you've already mastered. So we have this repetition of phrases or words and they only come up when you're really struggling and the ones that you've already mastered don't show up as often. And this is a great way to learn and memorize so you never forget a word or a phrase while you're having a conversation in real life. And this is one of the best ways to invest your time to learn a language. And you can do it during your daily commute or your morning routine. Even five minutes of listening to a podcast or a video will help you learn a language over time. But I'm sure you've heard this before, consistency is key. Whether it's when you wake up or before you go to bed, Practice maybe 15 or 20 minutes a day of vocabulary and this will sharpen your long-term memory. As long as you have a consistent and healthy schedule and you're dedicating that amount of time to learning, like actively learning the language, you're definitely going to see growth in your target language. All right, so we saw motivation is important. It's what keeps you focused on reaching your goals. And then investing time is also important because you have to stick to a regular study schedule and then your results will come. So now let's talk about the last pillar, which is inhibition. Now inhibition represents everything that's going to stop you from learning that language, whether it's feeling discouraged or the fear of making mistakes or sounding silly. I remember when I was learning Spanish, I would have conversations and I would constantly be thinking in my head, like, did I say that right? Oh my gosh, did I conjugate that verb correctly? Oh, did I make a mistake? They probably think I'm so stupid. And I'm a perfectionist, so I would take my mistakes really seriously and, and kind of think, overthink about them. And it, it was actually not healthy because I was being too hard on myself. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a conversation with someone who's visiting your country and they're speaking in your native of language. They're making an effort to speak your language. And you notice the person is making some mistakes or maybe they have an accent or just, you can tell that they're not from your country or they speak your native language. Are you going to think a, oh my God, this person is so stupid. B, oh, now I have to put in so much effort to help this person and try to understand them. Or C, wow, look at how far this person has come and all the effort and hard work that they're putting in to communicate with me in my language. You probably would pick C, right? I would too, personally. And I would probably help this person. I'd go even further to teach them something or to help them out with the pronunciation of certain phrases or teach them new vocabulary because if that person is making mistakes 
and you don't really care, then why are we so hard on ourselves when we make mistakes in our second language? It shows that you've come such a long way and that you do know another language. I love this comparison of when someone is making fun of an accent or the way that you speak your second language. How many languages do they speak? Because I'm sure it's probably only one. If you speak more than one language, you can understand the struggle. You can understand the hardship and the effort that it takes to do that. I remember the first time I went to Colombia, I was making so many mistakes when I was speaking in Spanish and people would correct me or they would laugh or we would have this conversation about, oh, I'm learning, it's okay, I'm making mistakes. And I think that was one of the factors that made me better in my second language because I would be almost so embarrassed at my mistakes that I would think about it so much and say, I'm not gonna make that mistake again because I don't wanna go through what I just went through, right? It would happen so often that I would make mistakes that I would get used to it. And I almost learned to laugh at myself and be silly and joke with the person that I'm talking to because it was a part of the process and I embraced it. I embraced my mistakes and it honestly made me so much better in the second language in Spanish. And I felt almost like free of judgment because I felt like no one can judge me if I don't judge myself. I No one's words can affect me. And I think that was the best decision I ever made when learning a language. So my point is don't take life too seriously. It's totally okay to mess up. And this willingness to make mistakes is actually one of these superpowers that we have that makes you an effective language learner. If you're not making mistakes, you're not growing. Okay, so throughout her life, Catolom never let herself be put off by her own mistakes and failures. She actually embraced them like I did. And she never strived for perfection. She said, language is the only thing worth knowing even poorly. So even if you don't know a language to perfection, I don't know English to perfection. I don't think you know your native language to perfection and that's okay. And perhaps my best advice to overcome this fear of speaking a language is just to speak it regularly. The more that you're doing it, the more confident and comfortable you're going to be in the second language. So try not to let the fear of feeling silly or don't get too much in your head and don't let this fear of looking silly overcome your urge or your your motivation to learn that language. Remember, you're learning, you're trying, and you will get better every single time that you practice. Isn't that awesome? That's like, there's no reason that you should be afraid of the journey that you're on because every single day you're making advances and you're getting closer and closer to reaching your goals. So to recap, the amazing Catolom created this formula, which is motivation plus invested time as the numerator and inhibition as the denominator. So. Investing time and motivation are the keys to learning any language. But even if you're really motivated and you spend a bunch of time studying, you won't make progress unless you don't give in to your inhibitions. If you don't let yourself make mistakes and sound silly sometimes, you probably won't see results. So only when you find a balance between these three pillars, you'll have a great journey through learning any language that you want. Once you figure out why you wanna learn a language, it'll be a lot easier to pursue it. And we're here to help. We have thousands of resources available for you, whether it's in our app, our portal, our YouTube channel, or the podcast that we have. I'm gonna leave the links for you guys in the description of this video so you can check everything out. And remember that tackling a language in many different ways makes learning fun, allows you to learn something every single day, and it makes sure that you don't get frustrated by the lack of progress in a single skill. I highly recommend you check out Catolom's book, How I Learned Languages. Thanks you guys so much for watching and good luck on your journey. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Fluency TV English and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and share with a friend that's also learning. See you guys next time. Bye.